When uh, I was that age, I saw a documentary about how rainforests were being destroyed by men and machines leaving destruction behind. And I remember feeling shocked and I couldn't believe that grown-ups would allow such a thing. And it woke up this inner warrior that I had to do something to stop this. So with friends, I collected money to buy a piece of the rainforest and made a promise to myself that as soon as I was old enough, I would go there to help. And so I did. I went there to work as a volunteer. And when I was there, I made another promise to myself that when I became a real grown-up, I wanted a job that focused on making the transition to a more sustainable living on our planet feasible. And here we are, 16 years later, and so far I have done my very best to deliver on my childhood and teenage promises. For the past decade, I have traveled the world trying to highlight the amazing technologies, solutions, innovations, policies that we have available to take us to a more sustainable future. And I have felt like a warrior on a mission, fired up by a strong sense of purpose, of passion. And I think I have felt exactly like many other ambitious leaders, entrepreneurs, ambitious people, that, that, that what I do is so important that I, I have to do it all the time. But two years ago, something happened that stopped me in my tracks completely. And it led me to question my mission, my life, and, and myself, really. It was, it was July 12, 2015, and um, I had spent the day bicycling in the forest with my parents and my daughter, who was two at the time. I remember it was a warm summer Sunday. We'd just gotten back, and she and I were jumping on our bed, being, being silly, when suddenly, during a hot fall, I hit my head so hard that I thought my skull had exploded and my jaw was ripped apart. Thankfully, it wasn't, but I had sustained a severe concussion, whiplash, and sprained my neck. And the doctors called it a minor traumatic brain injury, but for me, there was nothing minor about it. In a heartbeat, I went from being this warrior of passion to being in intense pain, couldn't cope with anything. Lights, sounds, moving objects were a nightmare for my brain. Every little sound, the noise from the dishwasher, the cows outside, the tea kettle, felt like a um, psychedelic heavy metal concert inside my head. And those noises became dreaded, terrifying noises because they would often kickstart a series of anxiety attacks. And even keeping up a simple conversation was so overwhelming for my brain that I would get extremely dizzy and nauseous and, and tired even after just a few minutes. Playing with my daughter and making her breakfast, stressing her, that kind of thing as a mother, mother wants to do was completely impossible. All I could cope with was darkness and silence and rest. And not just for a few days or weeks, but for months on end. And, and I have this default personality that when I encounter a problem, I want to find a solution. I want to come up with a project plan and work my way through it. And this part of me had a really hard time dealing with a broken body. Frantically, I tried to search for some kind of cure, calling doctors, Googling, but, but there were no cure. Only patience, and that was not a key strength of mine. I felt so lost. This personality of mine that wanted to go out there in the world and, and act and do were, were completely gone. 
my perception of myself as a, as a leader, a doer, and most importantly, a mother, was, was just gone. It was a nightmare. And I remember that this was just a few months before the big climate summit in Paris, and for tree huggers like me, that is, that is the Olympics. I mean, this would be the event where world leaders would finally gather to agree on a new climate treaty. And I, I, I really wanted to be there. I had to be there. <sighs> so one final resort of finding a cure, I went to see um, a psychiatrist or psychologist in the hopes that, that she would help me get me back on my path as quickly as possible. Maybe she could help me get to Paris. So I went there and I remember at the end of our first session, after having listened to my agony and frustration and eager to get back out, and out in the world again, she looked at me and said, Laura, I, I know you care deeply about sustainability. I, I got that part and I get that you are eager to get back. But I just have to ask you this. Do you think you have lived your life sustainably so far? And I looked at her as, as I didn't really know what she meant and, and then started to explain the many ways in which me and my family were recycling, buying organic, not owning a car, that kind of thing. And she looked at me again with this little smile that at the time annoyed the hell out of me. And she said, Laura, you know what I mean? Have you lived your life sustainably from the inside out? Or are you constantly running on an empty tank? <sighs> I was a bit defensive and annoyed and also a bit disappointed realizing that she was not going to help me get to Paris. But a question did strike a nerve with me, and for the following days, I reflected a lot about my approach to, to life and work for the past 20 years. I thought back on the many times that doing exams and leading up to big events, doing deadlines, that I would always ignore if I was feeling tired. I would just push my way through it and tell myself that it was not a problem with this hard work, because I mean, it was my passion, my purpose in life, and we're told that that's not a bad thing, right? But for the first time in my life, I found myself in a situation where pushing through was not an option. My brain and my body needed complete rest to heal. So I gave up the fight. And instead of joining my peers in Paris, I went on a silence retreat in the woods. And this decision of surrendering to healing felt like free falling into an un unknown deep darkness. It was raw and it was scary and my inner control freak did not approve. And nor did my ego. There was huge fear of, of missing out, of becoming irrelevant of being forgotten. After the silence retreat in the woods, followed months where slowly I started to accept this new reality. And my days were spent taking a walk, making a cup of tea, teaching myself how to meditate, staring into the wall doing physical training for my neck and retrain my eyesight, another meditation, another nap. And slowly I detoxed from this need of constantly striving for the next big goal. And I came to accept that my body was not a machine that I could barf orders at. I learned to take really, really good care of myself, and to be honest, this was new to me. I had never tried meditation before, and the whole concept of self-care was a luxury that I had seen as, a, as something I didn't have time for. I mean, we have so many problems in the world to solve, right? 
Our oceans are filled with plastic, temperatures are rising, and rainforests are being destroyed, and, and you want to go for a walk in the sun? But those walks in the sun, nature, meditation, became my medicine and my cure. And, and slowly the internal despair, the frustration and the sadness was replaced by a newfound peaceful way of being grounded in my own body. I felt stronger and more content, satisfied. I felt happier than ever and it was mind-blowing because how could I, without the constant rush of achievement, I did nothing my former self would have been proud of. How, how could I be happier? So as soon as I was able to, to read again, I was eager and curious to, to dig into the science behind silence and meditation. And in my research, I learned that through a daily meditation practice, we develop this immense inner resilience. We improve our intuition, our creativity, our ability to innovate. We become much more compassionate, much more caring, much more patient. And we actually become more efficient because we're so present with the task at hand. But on the other hand, when we rush through life, never stopping in our tracks, we lose this inner strength. When workload becomes too heavy, this fire of passion can, can eat us up and, and many break down. And in my case, I believe my body had a really hard time healing because it was not in a good state when my injury happened. From science, we know that when our brains and our bodies are in a constant state of stress, we make decisions based on fear and irrational thoughts. We lose our temper much more easily. And we see competitors and enemies instead of partners and friends. And we become addicted to things in our external world to, to make us feel better. We crave more, the, the fancy title, the big house, the fancy car, the power, the praise. And so this never-ending addiction starts. And in that part of my research, of course, I thought back to the words of my psychologist. Because can we preserve precious natural resources on our planet when we have no clue how to preserve our own? And can we reduce mass consumption and mass production when we constantly work too much ourselves? A, a few weeks ago, a friend of mine who works with passionate social entrepreneurs told me that stress and burnout and substance abuse has become an increasing problem. And when you look on a global level, the reported stress level are increasing each year. And it's especially bad among millennials. And when you look around in the world right now, it's, it's a global epide epidemic. And, and it shows, right? It shows in our leadership in the world right now. And let me be very clear. Troops of wounded warriors cannot fight to make this world a better place. It's simply impossible. The quality of our work and how we show up in this world depends on the quality of what's in here, of our inner thoughts. And, and don't get me wrong, I mean, passion is great, and having a strong sense of purpose is amazing. But if we don't teach ourselves and our kids to, to tame that fire and slow down, it will burn us to the ground. And what good are we going to do from there? Now that I have crawled out of my recovery cave and slowly entering the world again, I still have to constantly catch myself when the excitement over a new idea gets the better of me. But I do catch myself. I, I stop and I breathe. <sighs> And I make sure that my days have space for a meditation and a walk in the sun. 
I'm as committed to my mission as ever, but it has changed slightly because I really don't believe we will ever succeed building a desirable, sustainable future if we only focus on the solutions and the technologies when the leadership and the people who are going to implement these solutions are not in a good state. I strongly believe that we need to cultivate societies where our first priority is to show compassion to ourselves and to those around us. I strongly believe in a world where we teach our kids meditation and the importance of a strong inner connection in schools and where our workplace keeps that as a priority. I'm excited to enter the world again. And I'm excited for this next promise that I've made of continuing my mission of building resilient and sustainable societies, but with an equal focus on the importance of inner sustainability. Inner sustainability goes hand in hand with external sustainability. We can't have one without the other. And for you, I, I really hope that, that you don't wait until your body stops you in your tracks. Please dare to slow down and dare to take breaks and first and foremost dare to connect with this inner magic space of silence and of your unique strength. Thank you. Thank you.